locations on theater allocation. Thank you very much. Twenty minutes? Yeah. Okay. Good morning. Uh, well, it is a paper we make with Juan Prieto and Victoria Teca. Um, it is a, it is studied the strategic decision of distributor regarding theater allocation or more specifically the number of theater where a movie is released. Ah, sorry. Uh, well, this paper study the strategic decision regarding the theater allocation or more specifically the number of theater where a movie is released and w the number of theater where a movie is shown uh, during the life on the screen. And we study the impact of this decision on cinema attendance or most specifically on box office revenues. Well, some specific characteristics of this industry that are important to understand why we study this topic are that, that the product in this industry is a short life cycle product that competes with many new, unique, and imperfect substitutes in a relative short time. And then the demand for, this part, for a particular movie drop and collapse after a few weeks. And at the same time, there is a big reduction in the number of theaters. There are exceptions to this pattern, especially if the movie presents a positive and a strong worth of mount effects. And the demand increase or continue for a long period and after the release. And there is a high uncertainty in the commercial success of films that require adjustment in the theater allocation over the life of the movie. For all these reasons, the theater allocation is a key strategic decision variable. And the number of the theaters uh, where a movie is exhibited are negotiated uh, between the distributor and the exhibitors. And in this negotiation, there is a asymmetric uh, power because the distribution market is highly concentrated. Uh, due, because the major film studios have a dominant position in this market. Well, in this context, the main objective of the paper is to study the relationship between the distributor market share and the influence uh, they have in the observed theater allocation. We are going, uh, more specifically, we are going to examine whether the major distributor, that are the distributors that have a large market share, follow different theater allocation strategies in terms of distribution intensity. Uh, these strategies, of course, must have an impact on the clauses that each major apply in the exhibition contract. But uh, there is not public information about the clauses that are included in, the, in this contract. For this reason, we are going to try to establish some conjecture on the distinct strategic behavior of the distributors and their influence in the theater allocation, estimating different, uh, the theater elasticity of box office revenues for the different distributors. Uh, the data we use uh, are collected by Nielsen and we use also data collected uh, from the web page of the movie and the internet movie database. And the sample consists of the 150 top box office films of each year, released each year, in the US during 2002 and 2009 period. Well, uh, this paper is made with no, uh, data from North America, but uh, here we want to show that the conclusion we are going to arrive in this paper uh, could be applied to the European markets. Uh, for this reason, I show here uh, some correlation between the main variables we use in this paper and the four major European markets, like UK, Spain, Germany, and France. Uh, here we have the correlation of the theater in which the movie is released between US and the four different markets, and for the variable total box office revenues too, we distinguish between majors, uh, between if the movie are for majors or non majors. We can see that the correlation is high, but in just in the case of France, it is a little lower because in this country, the 
the movies, the domestic movies are more important. Well, um, even when we are considering only the films at the top of the distribution, the number of weeks that the films are on the screen is really low. Then, for this reason, we are going to to estimate two weekly box office revenues considering two different time framework. In the first model, we are going to consider all the movies. Um, we estimate this for the first 10 weeks. And in model two, we will consider the films that remain on the screen for a longer period, for 15 weeks, and we are estimate this for 15 weeks too. Uh, in this way, we get, we get a more balanced panel um, we are going to estimate this second model in order to extend our analysis to the most successful films uh, that could have a different pattern in the demand. Well, how we have a panel data, and this allows us to use uh, panel data techniques and to control for the unabsorbed heterogeneity among films that it is important in this market because it is a highly heterogeneous product. Well, uh, our model was to make the weekly box office revenues equation for a particular movie I in week T. Well, as we said before, we have a film-specific effect that captures the unobserved film's characteristic. We try to capture all the characteristics of the movie with these specific effects and other tiny invariant variables that try to measure the characteristic of the movie. We are going to see these variables later. Well, and we have uh, four different sets of variables. The set uh, sub one is are the exogenous and tiny invariant characteristic of movie, such as if the movie have, an have received an international award, or the rating of the movie, or the distributor, if it is a major. Um, then we have a set of tiny invariant variables that could be correlated with the individual effects. Uh, and here we include the budget of the films that is important to determine the quality of the movie too, and uh, the present of a star, if the movie belongs to a sequel, or if the movie has been released in a holiday. Then we have a set of exogenous and time varying controls that capture the competence of new release films and capture the change in underlying demand through the year. And we include here the week uh, in which uh, the movie is exhibited. Then we have a set of time varying variables that could be correlated with the individual effects too. And we include here the number of theaters in which the movie is exhibited in each week. And we interact this variable um, with the distributors and with the trend, with the time. Okay, um, we are going to estimate this model, this model using Hausmann and Taylor estimator um, that propose a random effects model with did, with deal with the potential correlation with some subplanetary variables and our individual effects. And with this model, this model allows us to estimate the time invariant, the coefficient for the time invariant variables too. Okay. Um, well, uh, here are the variables I commented before. Then, um, well, with this result, I will make a plot of the theater elasticity over the movie run. Then, just I have to comment here that. The theater elasticity is close to one and highly uh, significantly in both models. And the theater elasticity for the different majors, Disney, Fox, Paramount, is lower than from the reference category that it are the non major distributors. And well, um, regarding the other, other variables that measure the quality of the movie and different effects, we can see that. Uh, for example, having a, a war, or uh, having a star in a movie, or being released on holiday, all these effects are important in the model where we have a short time framework. When we estimate the model with a long time framework, the effect of these variables seems to dilute, and it 
maybe it is because the worth of mode effect is more important to determine the success of the film. Then in the weekly dummies, we can see that there, there is a clear uh, pattern decay of the box office uh, over time. Uh, well, we conduct the Hausmann test to explore if the set of instruments used here are legitimate. And in all cases, we cannot reject the null hypothesis there, uh, in favor of our model, Hausmann and Taylor model. Um, well, here we have the plot of the theater elasticity over the weeks on screen. Um, before interpreting these results, we must consider that a high theater elasticity is associated with the high occupancy rate of the theaters. And if the distributor in this moment is distributed, have one field to release, it is interested in getting the maximum number of theaters for their movies. And this fact reduces the theater elasticity. But for the exhibitor, they are interested in getting the maximum, in increasing the occupancy rate of the theaters. And this increases the theater elasticity. Then the effects are in, in the opposite direction. Um, well, we can see here that theater elasticity for all major distributors are lower than the estimated elasticity for the non-majors in the first and in the second model, uh, because the, la, uh, the black line is for the reference category that are the non-major distributors. Uh, we find no big difference between majors. Um, this is smaller theater elasticity form for majors could be associated with two different situations. First, it could be a pull effect when the distributors give incentive to exhibitors to allocate, a more, to allocate more theaters to a particular film. And it could be because the mayor offer better condition to the exhibitors in the revenue sharing contract. But other option is that there is a push effect uh, when the distributor use the negotiation power forcing exhibitors to allocate a large number of theaters to their films. And this explanation is consistent with the observed difference in market share between non-majors and major distributors. Um, we can see that uh, in the first model there is a decrease, decreasing trend of the theater elasticity over the time, uh, which is more pronounced for the majors than the, from the no, that for the non-majors. Uh, this could, this result again could be explained by the high market power of major that can impose a minimum playing time in their movies, uh, regardless of the film's performance. But uh, an alternative is the extensive use of profit sharing contracts with different growing sliding scales for the exhibitor. Uh, if the re the percentage of the revenues is cre uh, increase with the time. Uh, for the exhibitors, uh, it could generate greater incentive to keep the movie on screen for a longer period, uh, even if the total revenues of each week is decreasing. And when in Model 2, when we consider the most successful film that continues on the screen for a longer period, we can see that there is like an inverse U shape in the theater elasticities, uh, but this uh, U-shape is more pronounced for non-major company. Um, for these films, we expect a large and positive worth of month effects. Um, and if this effect is not fully anticipated when the exhibitor contracts are signed and when they decide the number of theater allocated to this movie, then the theater fill up more and more each week, and this will raise the theater elasticity during the first weeks. Well, um, I finished there. All these findings constitute indirect evidence of the negotiation power of mayor that, and the influence in the theater allocation process in terms of distribution intensity. Uh, 
Considering the impact of the market power may have on theater allocation over the movie run, and considering that this variable is one of the main determinants of movie commercial success, there are, not, uh, there are some policy implications that can be derived for our analysis. First is that given the relevance of the contract terms to fix the theaters, it is advisable to control for the possible presence of abusive clauses, especially among distributors with a larger market share. And since the worth of Mon could be important for some particular hits, it could be appropriate to include flexi clauses in the exhibition contract to allow to increase the number of theaters if it could be necessary. And the inclusion of flexible clauses can also be used to adjust the number of theaters uh, when a part uh, to don't work when a particular film underperform. And this would lend to exhibitor to adjust the use of the theater better. And this consideration could increase the diversity of cinema products supply and might improve the audience participation. Um, thank you, and I am looking forward to receive the comments. Okay, so thank you very much, Fernanda. So, Victor, yeah. you will get the microphone. Please only talk on the so microphone. I have a, a small problem with uh, you use you're using uh, a word as an as a right hand side right hand side variable so exogenous variable I don't know exactly when you start counting uh, box office you seems to be starting at week one after the movie has been has been released now usually the awards are given quite some weeks or even some months after, a couple of months after the movie has been re uh, released, and that has two consequences. You cannot have the awards variably before the awards were distributed. And secondly, uh, it may be the case that uh, the awards is partly endogenous. If, if the movie is very successful, then these, these guys, the Oscars and the Golden Globes are more likely to give uh, to give an award to the movie who, which made a, a lot of box office. So I would like to know how you react on this on this issue. It's not it's not a major issue, but you should be and a little more careful than just saying, "Well, we put the words in the right hand side." Okay, that the presence of award, uh, if the movie have received a award, well, could be is, an. The movie is usually released before the award exists. Yes, well, but. Sometimes they make a, like a first release with... So for Oscars, it's clear. Be, for Oscars, it's clear because the movie has to be released before the Oscar is given, and it even has to be played in one of the theaters somewhere in, 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 uh, in California. So it has to be released before the Oscar is given. Sometimes they make a, like a pre-release with a small number of theaters. Then in this case, we take the release date, like uh, the week in which the number of theater is higher. But maybe for some movies with good control for this. But You're right, no? That awards sometimes are received after the, 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 movie, the movie was released. And maybe it's the excuse to, to have a, a new youth of the, of the movie. But we use this uh, variable just to control. We are, we are not really interested in the, in the impact of awards on the, on the revenues. But it could be related with some of the characteristics of the movies that affect the other uh, coefficients in our estimation. So we we were not pretending we are not pretending that the the coefficient that we have uh, gotten for 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 the award is uh, exactly the, the impact that our, an award has on on the on revenues. No, but it could be related with other things that could be important for the for the revenue for the commercial run of the of the movie. We were more interested in know how 
majors and non-majors allocate theaters and the impact that it, you know, this decision may have on, on revenues. Uh, in fact, I think we have to discriminate between two kinds of awards. We have the awards which are delivered by the festival, and all these awards are delivered before the issue of the films. And these mm -hmm. awards, a palm in, in, uh, in, in Cannes, a bear in Berlin, and so on, may have an uh, important effect on the distribution of the film. Then we have what I would say exposed awards, which are the awards that the Oscar and the César, which are delivered after one year of, uh, uh, of, uh, of issue of films, is uh, the best film of the previous year. And then is a kind of uh, award you are receiving, but where the only impact they can have is to give a second life to a film which was already a success, and then the impact is rather small. But I would like to raise a question on another problem. It's the problem of the no, no major film. Uh, you say that, uh, of course, the, 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 the theater do not have a very large part of decision for this because the, 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 the power of the major is close to uh, abuse of dominant position, to, to use the terms of the European community. And I don't know if any uh, dispute has already been introduced against that with the competition uh, 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 administration of the of the commission, but for the other film, the problem is that uh, the effort to have them promoted and the the, uh, the most effect takes at least one two weeks, and in the reality, this film do not appear in the theater for more than one week, generally speaking. So this means that the system does not provide them with the sufficient time in order to enable them to become a success. But we have good examples which is telling exactly the reverse. I mean, Poulain was a very wonderful example. But in, in, in fact, the, 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 the cinema, uh, as French say, RRC, is very difficult to defend because the, the, the period of distribution is rather small and no economic observation can be done because it's too quick. I don't know if you, you if you have taken notice of this, if you, if you had some information about that. Sorry. Could you, yes, instead of the whole comment, make a direct question so she can answer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> my direct question <laughs> is, what, a nice contribution, yeah. But, yeah. what is the situation for the non-major films as far as distribution? Uh, do you think they have the opportunity mm. to be distributed a sufficient long time? No, so probably an answer is that we are having a very special sample, right? Yes. So these are really blockbusters. These are really successful films for Model 1 and even more successful films for Model 2, right? The so top. this is our top 100 50. for that period. So, sorry to that. so there are, of course, films coming from non-major distributors. Non distributors. But they are the films that uh, better perform in each year. The proportion? 20% uh, uh, maybe, 20% or yes, or a little less. Okay, I like very much uh, the, the paper and the results. Uh, I, I was wondering, however, uh, about one point. Uh, you um, consider the, uh, the market power of the majors uh, more or less as an assumption in here is given by the fact that you choose the blockbusters. And of course, mm -hmm. already choosing the blockbusters, you give market power to the major. Uh, if you consider all the movies, they may not have that market power first. Second, uh, sometimes 
uh, cinemas have also some market power, consider for instance new arenas, uh, larger screens, uh, better equipments and other things, so they have the market power. Of course, when you consider blockbusters, this market power disappears because everyone was, wants to get you know, uh, the, the, big, the big movie. But in a, with a broader set, probably this result should be considered with some caution, I think. Um, I think we, we have included some figures in the paper regarding the market share of the majors. But in this figure, uh, we get this data from internet considering all the movies, not only the sample. Um, and in this case, it's maybe the market share was something like 20% or a little less for each major. And uh, I don't know if I am answering. <laughs> When, when you have when you have more movies, although you have the market share, uh, I mean, it's more likely that the top movie blockbuster will be released by a major. That's what the, what I mean. So if you consider uh, blockbuster, especially, it's already uh, no, there the market power the major. It, it is less likely than uh, uh, that that of course than uh, a big movie will be released by a non major. But they may have, uh, you know, a smaller amount of movies, but good movies that make their steady. But if you consider only movies that have some length in 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 uh, being shown, you already select all the major movie. The market power becomes bigger. Like when you say the sample consists of 150 top box office, mm -hmm. already the each non year. yeah. It's then, yeah, it's half of the movie release. It, yeah, yeah, movies. but already you see, if you see the the top, usually mm, it's more, yes. it's less likely that the non major will be in this in this uh, higher uh, yes. quintile. That's what I mean. Well, we consider. I'm not saying that the results are wrong. I'm saying just uh, a little word. I mean, a word of caution, saying okay, already there is already in this selection, you give more market power to uh, to the majors. Well, yes, we, we speak about market power, but really we are considering the market power in the model, including dummy variables for the majors. We are not including a measure of market powers. Uh, we have not measured the market power with this sample. No, no. Any other question or comment? No? Good, so thank you very much. So now we can have time for a coffee break. It will be a long coffee break. So please come here. Uh, finally, after the session yesterday, right? So uh, please come back here at a quarter past 11, right? So thank you very much. <laughs>